Good morning, and welcome to the Cathedral of St. Paul. I'm Melinda, and we're glad you've joined us for worship in person or via our live stream today. Two things of note, although there is an announcement sheet with lots of things to note on it, but I'll just hit the two highlights. Um, the 20th of this month is our next Home Eucharist. Uh, I'm the celebrant at that, and it would be delightful to have you join us for the Eucharist in a different way, and then to stay for dinner and, and get to know one another in that capacity. So let the office know, and we'll get you the address. The second thing is that the chapters decided to have a little fun during coffee hour in the summer. Um, not that coffee hour isn't always fun, truly it is, where there's caffeine and sweet, you know. Um, but we've got some Polaroids and there are a lot of new faces around the cathedral and we thought it'd be fun to sort of uh, use the Polaroids to take some pictures and write some names and sort of get to know who one another are and admit that sometimes we don't always know everyone's name but this is a, a fun way to maybe own that and uh, get to know one another more deeply. So there are lots of fun pastel Polaroids and it'll be a, a good time. No one is going to compel you though to get your photograph so do not in this moment feel panicked. I invite you into this space. God is here. And whatever burden you have, I invite you to try to set that down for the next hour of our time together as we sing and as we hear words read and as we share the bread and wine. God is here and you are here. Worship will begin in a moment.
Blessed be the one holy and living God. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor, grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit, that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Zechariah. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he. Humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem and the battle bow shall be cut off and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today, I declare that I will restore to you double. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but the sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me that is in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, <clears throat> but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, To what will I compare this generation? It's like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another, We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard a friends of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, 
and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Come to me, says Jesus, all you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. What then is heavy? What then is difficult? What then yokes are too hard to bear? It seems sometimes that the past is one of those things we resist leaving in the past. And we end up carrying it around us, rolling around some sort of heavy luggage that would certainly not pass the airport inspection scales. <laughs> it's true, right? The past, sometimes we hold on to it. And may maybe it's the decisions we made in the past we took one job over another, or we didn't move when we might have, could have, or we made a choice and we wonder if we'd just gone a different direction, if we'd just done something different, what, what would life be like now? And it haunts us. Or maybe it's that relationship, maybe romantic, but maybe just a friendship, or maybe just familial, and for some reason it didn't work out. People change. Circumstances change, and sometimes time doesn't heal every wound. But there are those expectations we also find. They get laid upon our shoulders like weights when we're young. Things our families tell us, things that culture expects of us, things religious institutions demand of us. And they set on our shoulders and they acquire weight when we can't meet the expectations. Or we work our whole lives to meet the expectations and we lose our own self and our own soul in the process. And then we don't know who we are. And we wonder who we might be if it were all different. And I think for some of us, grief is like a backpack. And it's grief for the the people in our lives that aren't there. Maybe death claimed them, but maybe they're just not present to us. And we're down, heavy, but maybe it's just the past mistakes that we made, or the ways that we failed, or the things that didn't go right. And pretty soon, we're down, and we're down, and it's just too much to carry. You who carry heavy burdens, says Jesus, I, will give you rest. The psalmist says today that the Lord upholds all who are falling 
and raises up all who are bowed down. That the past has formed us and carried us, burdened us and broken us, and blessed us, but it's not the sum of who we are. It's not the totality of who we are. And the invitation of Jesus is whether we can trust God with who we have been and what we have done. And if we can set it down, if we're willing to let Jesus pick the weight off our shoulders, or at least a couple of them, or carry the suitcase for a while, there is something heavy that can drag on us when we let the past continue to define us in the present. But the yoke can be broken. And Jesus Christ came to heal every wound in the infiniteness of time. And Jesus Christ endures all things and forgives all things. And can we trust him enough to let the past be the past? But maybe for you, the past was a golden age of a lifetime or a childhood, sunny memories. You know, the kind of Polaroids that are sepia with love. And instead, it's the future. Like some kind of yoke strapped to your neck, it drags you forward at a pace you don't want to go, scratching you up, pulling you ahead, torturing you. Because you look ahead and the economic uncertainty is a lot to bear. How on earth will you retire if you can't get more money into that IRA or that Roth? How on earth will you ever afford college, maybe for just the one child that you have? And what about your aging parents? Surely they'll need help to get into some kind of place that's nice. How will you, how will you do it? Maybe you'll have to take up that second job. But then there's also the moment where you look in the mirror and there's some gray hair popping up, or maybe a lot of gray hair popping up, and you begin to realize that maybe what's come before is the longest part, and what's ahead is a lot shorter. And what is aging? And how do you do it? And what does it mean to say goodbye to this wild and precious life that is your own? And what happens if you don't get into the university or the master's program? What happens if you don't find time to heal your marriage or your relationship with your kids? And so the future, the yoke around our necks, it begins to really choke us, pulling us at a pace we can't really afford to go, but you can't halt time. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, says Jesus, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. The Lord is good to all, writes the psalmist. His compassion is over all things that he has made. And that includes the future. That God accompanies us and holds us through all things. There's a humility in Jesus Christ, right? The one who is God the Son takes on human flesh and finiteness. And perhaps the greatest humility we learn from Jesus is to in fact be human that we cannot and should not and never will know the future, that we're finite and we're human, and too often we don't want to be. We want to know what's next, we want to control the outcome, but really all we have is actually right now. And do we trust the goodness of God who's held us in the past and holds us now to hold us in the future? Because the invitation is to a yoke that's light, that walks at a pace we can manage, that knows us better than we know ourselves and can chart a path to a place that will lead us to rest. But sometimes it's not the past or the future, the present is a little too much to bear because really you're doing too many whack-a-moles to think about what was or what's coming. Because how are you supposed to be a good spouse and a good parent and keep a full-time job and visit your aging parents in the nursing home and buy that birthday present for your cousin and remember that the, the family reunion's in two weeks and you've got to plan the vacation in six months and your other side of your in-laws are calling to see if you're coming for Christmas and really all you want is a cup of coffee on the beach but you have to go to the gym because if you don't meet your mile time, it's all going to be over. 
right? Variations on a theme, I'm sure. But there's the other side of the present, too, for some of us, where the, the time seems interminable because you don't know quite what you're doing. And you'd pick up the phone and call someone if you had someone to call, but you really don't. And so the seconds drag into minutes, the drag into days, and there's a kind of sweltering lethargy and sadness, and the present is unpleasant. And maybe to escape either the unknown or the, 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 the sort of feeling of loss in the present or the feeling of extreme overwhelm, we eat too much or we drink too much or we make our exercise our God or we pour ourselves out and never know who we are. And so it's all just so heavy. <coughs> Come to me, all you who are weary. All your work shall give thanks to you, O Lord, says the psalmist, and all your faithful shall bless you. Giving thanks and blessing are hard when you're running so fast or when you're stuck in a slog. And rest is neither of those things. Rest isn't sleeping in in the morning. That's not what Jesus means, much as I would love that. It's not actually what Jesus means. Rest for the soul is something deeper than that. Rest for the soul is submitting to the way of Jesus Christ, to the yoke that's love, to walking at the pace that God knows is right for us, on a path that God can chart, a pace and a path that can sustain us through the minutes and the days and the months and the years, in every weather, through all conditions. The rest Jesus offers is finding our soul's strength in the love of God, the love that looks at us and knows that we are loved and longs for us to find a space within ourselves, a peace in the present, it's not escapism, it's not post-death, it's a rest now. Not just from busyness, but a kind of mental rest in which we know that the outcome of everything doesn't rely on us. We do not control all things. People make choices, we've made choices. God loves us anyway, God loves those people too. Rest is knowing the anchor of our souls in Jesus Christ. And the burden of that is knowing our own humanness, of trusting God enough to walk where he leads. Come to me, says Jesus, all you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light.
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Siblings in Christ, there's a wideness in God's mercy like the wideness of the sea. Therefore, let us come before our loving God saying, hear us, we humbly pray, Lord, help us. Loving God, you have shown your church such great mercy. Through the witness of your church, may those beyond our walls also experience the goodness of your mercy. We pray especially for the Church of the Province of Uganda, Holy Trinity Brookville, St. Paul's Angola, and St. Luke's Attica. Hear us, we humbly pray. Lord of all peoples, you have created us to live together. Help us to see that our common life depends on each other's work and goodwill. Cause wars to cease and generosity to prevail. Hear us, we humbly pray. Caring God, how good and pleasant it is when your children live together in unity. Pour out a spirit of reconciliation in our community and country. Hear us, we humbly pray. Lord Christ, may those who call out to you find your heart open to their cries. We ask for healing for the sick and suffering, the desperate and depressed, those in prison, and those living under oppression of any kind. Hear us, we humbly pray. God of blessing, bless your people with life forevermore. May the dying find comfort, may the dead Rest in your peace. Hear us, we humbly pray. God of peace, let us, your people, know that at the heart of turbulence there is an inner calm that comes from faith in you. Keep us from being content with things as they are, that from this central peace there may come a creative compassion, a thirst for justice, and a willingness to give of ourselves in the spirit of Christ. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor.
God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and a good and joyful thing to give you thanks, all holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. You have filled us in all creation with your blessing and fed us with your constant love. 
You have redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us into one body. Through your spirit, you replenish us and call us to fullness of life. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we failed to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us. And so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with all your saints past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
the gifts of God, for the people of God.
Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. And the blessing of the triune God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain upon you now and evermore. Let us go forth rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God.